Horns up and welcome to episode 3 of the Headbangers Kitchen podcast. Today we're going to be talking about how to lose weight. I asked you guys what should be the subject of my next podcast and this was the most common answer. And this question was asked in many different ways. How do I lose weight? How do I lose weight quickly? How do I lose weight without dieting and many other iterations of the same question? And I thought we could deep dive into this subject because there is a lot to unpack here. And of course, I've got my notes handy in uh, professional podcaster fashion. So let's get straight into it. The first thing really is how important is weight? Weight is just one of the many factors that you can use to sort of figure out about your health. Are you healthy? You know? Weight is just a number on a scale. It is, I would say, not the most important thing when we're talking about health and fitness. Because when we talk about losing weight, what exactly are we talking about? You know, yes, if you are 100 pounds overweight, if you're 50 pounds overweight, you know what, by all means, weight as a number on the scale, yeah, that's a good sort of... uh, measuring tool to see if you're making progress that's fine you know but if you are closer to what would be considered a healthy weight for your uh, height and your gender then the equation is a little bit different you know because when we talk about losing weight we are not specifying what weight are we losing because you could lose water weight so for example when we do keto Everybody loses weight very quickly in the first week, or at least most people do. And the reason is that's water weight. A lot of times you'll see people have lost 10, 15 kilos. That's for Americans, that's about 30, 40 pounds. And they look very sick. They don't necessarily look very like, yeah, you know, look at me, I lost weight. It's more like, "Mm, look at me, I lost weight. And that's because they've lost muscle as well as fat, as well as water. So they end up looking rather weak. You know, I was in that same position when I lost uh, weight on keto and I reached my goal weight and I looked in the mirror. I didn't really have any great body shape. I didn't look buffed up. I just looked like a smaller version of my old self. So I look like a dehydrated grape. So that's something I've actually been talking about quite a bit. So. When we talk about losing weight, what you're actually talking about or what is more important to focus on is body fat. You know, you want to lose body fat. That is very important. So when it comes to weight, just look at it as one part of the equation. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is having realistic expectations. So you want to lose weight. Yeah, but you want to do it quickly. Or you want to do it in a certain way. The thing is, if you look back on your life, look at how you gained the weight to start with. You didn't eat a cheeseburger and you know balloon up the next morning. No. You have gained weight, like most people, over a period of time. That could be a couple of months. It could be a couple of years. Yeah, think about it. Really look back at your journey. You know, and you will see that it took a long time and a lot of unhealthy eating habits, a lot of excessive eating, probably. Maybe you also had some medical issues, but it took a lot of things to actually get you to where you are today. So, when you're going to lose weight, you cannot expect it to be a sort of uh, snap your fingers and lose the weight uh, deal because it took time to gain the weight, it's going to take you time to lose the weight. And that is the sustainable and the right way to actually lose weight. You know, they have a couple of guidelines, you want to lose about one pound of your total body weight per week, like that is the safe and sort of right way to do it. And that is very true. Um, uh, Let me tell you a little bit of my own story. I was, I think about 84 kilos at one point in my life. And I took three years to lose 12 kilos and I was and that like that weight is not really come back because it I did it slowly and surely and that weight stayed off for a very long period of time. 
you know it's only when i again went into like a again a long period of not watching what i ate and eating in excess that the weight started to come back but i have never i still have not crossed 80 kilos ever in fact i have never crossed 17 79 was the highest i ever went back to and that also is a different story because i actually built muscle along the way so that is not you know uh regaining the fat that i had lost so i think that is something that is really important have a realistic expectation of how much weight you will lose and in how long a period that is important so focus not just on losing weight as a number focus on losing body fat most of us need to lose a fair amount of body fat so focusing on that is important now how exactly do you do that well that is where you have to work at it by exercising and by eating the right foods you know and also when you are trying to lose weight it's important to track more than just the weight on the scale so what you should be doing is taking photographs of yourself uh, in your underwear uh, every week same day same time same place same lighting everything the same you should be doing that also use a measuring tape and take your measurement so you can see if you're losing inches on your waist another thing to keep in mind is that again this is if you are going to be working towards building muscle which i think we will actually get to soon because that is a a bit of its own uh, sort of uh, discussion but i think it's important to sort of when you're talking about losing weight now start working at your overall health because that is more important like because why are you trying to lose weight yes there may be a certain vanity attached to losing weight to looking thinner or whatever it is that uh, motivates you or sort of makes you want to lose the weight but i think and correct me if i'm wrong don't we all just want to live healthier and better lives like live our best possible life and at the same time be as healthy as possible and live for as long as possible you know not counting factors that are not in our control like you know genetic uh, conditions or the world outside which we have no control over but as much of our lives as we can control don't we want to be in the best health possible i i would think so which is why i think focusing on your overall health is more important so finally what diet is the best to achieve the best health or to lose the weight and you know get down to the right body fat percentage well the true answer um and again i must put a disclaimer that i'm neither a dietitian nor a doctor nor a nutritionist so uh take my advice with a pinch of salt a grain of salt i'm just talking to you from experience from what i have been able to see and learn across many different kinds of people including doctors nutritionists dietitians if you watch many of them if you listen to many of them you will notice that there are certain commonalities and there's a lot of common sense also so which diet which diet you want the quick answer don't you well you know what it is not that simple truth be told a well balanced diet is what works having said that every person is different some of you might do great on keto some of you might be better off doing low carb somebody else might be happy with high carb somebody might be vegan because they want to live and a life that is ethical according to their ideologies maybe somebody else just prefers carnivore so all these diets can help you lose weight you know you have to pick the one that you can actually sustain because here's the biggest problem with dieting when you change your diet too much and you do something drastic and i have been guilty of this you know do something very drastic you will 100% lose weight if you are used to eating uh, for lack of a better diet choice the standard american diet and you suddenly shift to keto or low carb chances are you're going to lose weight you know if you were doing say keto and your weight stopped and you suddenly shifted to carnivore or vegan you'd probably lose weight as well but unless you can actually sustain that diet the chances are you will go off that diet you will not be able to control yourself and you will gain back the weight and over the years of being uh, sort of the keto go to guy for people 
I have seen many, many people the same thing. Hey Sahil, I did keto and the first time I lost a lot of weight. And then I went off keto and I gained all the weight back and now I'm trying to do keto again and it's difficult for me. Does that sound familiar? If that sounds familiar, then you have picked the wrong diet. Because the correct diet is the one that you can stick to. Again, for me personally, what I've realized is I love food. I want to eat good food. And at the same time, I want to be in the best of health possible. So I try and eat a well-balanced diet pretty much most of the time. And I do allow myself indulgences that may not be as healthy. And that's kind of where it's important to be 80% consistent. So you've decided with whatever diet you're doing, you've said this is the diet like I've picked moderation is the key. That is my diet, moderation. And in that diet, I know that I want to eat a good amount of protein. I want to have a good amount of vegetables, fruits, and I want to have rice and I want to have a sourdough bread. And that's part of my healthy diet and it gives me all the nutrition I need. But I also want to go out and eat pizza and burger and cake maybe. I don't know. Depends. So instead of trying to like be 100% consistent and like you know every single meal is, meal is going to be chicken, broccoli, rice. That's fine. As long as most of the days I'm eating what I consider a healthy diet. I'm okay to eat a, a meal or two during the week which is maybe a little more indulgent and frankly speaking I have found that to be the best way for me to manage I won't say I ever have like cravings like I never had these cravings like I have to eat this dessert or something no but I can enjoy food I have a food club I can go out with them I can enjoy a meal and I can be like yeah you know what I'm good and I, I feel good doing that I feel better you know that's kind of what works for me but now let's get back to the weight loss because I know everyone's itching for that so no matter what diet you have selected how does one actually lose weight well here's the simple and the truthful answer it boils down to the amount of calories you consume in a day versus the amount of calories that you burn in a day so if you eat in a calorie deficit which means you eat fewer calories than you are burning, you will lose weight no matter what diet you are on. You might be shouting out in the comments now, Sahil, I did keto and low carb and paleo and I never counted a calorie but I lost weight. Well, that may be the case but you definitely ate in a calorie deficit and that is why you did lose weight. You see, when you do diets, like I said, when you do a diet that's very different from what you were doing and you eliminate complete food groups, imagine this. Your breakfast used to be two eggs, two pieces of toast, uh, a tablespoon of butter on the toasts, a tablespoon of butter to cook the eggs and three strips of bacon. Now that meal... Well, if I do a rough calculation, two eggs, we're looking at 150 calories, a tablespoon of butter, another 120. Let's say that meal is 600 calories, just round it off. Okay, you are eating 600 calorie breakfast and you suddenly remove the two toasts from that equation. And that one tablespoon of butter that you used to put on the toast is gone as well. Guess what? You dropped by 400, like you dropped by about at least 200 calories on that meal. So guess what? You ate in the calorie deficit whether you counted it or not. You know, it's very simple. If you were eating burgers and you suddenly start throwing away the bun and you don't eat the french fries, guess what? That's a calorie deficit because you removed calories that you used to eat earlier. Intermittent fasting. You used to eat breakfast, lunch and dinner. Then you stopped eating breakfast and you ate just lunch and dinner. You cut calories. So you may not need to count the calories, you know, every meal. Or you may be able to lose weight without counting calories, but that doesn't mean the calories don't matter. And truth be told, it can get complicated. Food labels can be wrong by up to 20%. Sometimes you don't check everything that you're eating. It's not easy. There's, there's no way where I'm saying this is easy. Also, if you have a medical condition, if your hormones are out of whack, that can definitely affect the equation. The kinds of food you can eat 
also affect the equation because example if you eat protein protein is something that takes a lot of calories to also digest so if you eat a higher protein diet it's going to have a different effect on you than if you were eating ice creams for every meal so it's very important to know that there are nuances there are a lot of things to uh, sort of keep in mind but at the end of the day it is the calorie equation that determines whether or not you lose weight so that's the easy answer you know now how can you be successful if you are trying to lose weight i have a few tips for sure which i would like to share with you and i think one of them is definitely planning your meals in advance now i did a series on my youtube channel called my unimpressive weight loss transformation and in that series i kind of teach you guys how do you how do you know how many calories you need in a day how do you know how many calories are there in the food you are eating i teach you guys all this in that video series and i strongly urge you to watch that on my youtube channel but it's very simple i'll break it down in an easy way for you you go online and find a calculator a calorie calculator you put in your age your weight your height all that and it will give you a number now i know there are people who are going to go like and complain about this and be like you're wrong blah 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 very simple these are ballpark figures yeah you can always adjust and edit based on your results so for example if this calorie calculator tells you that you need 2000 calories in a day to maintain your weight all you need to do is eat fewer than 2000 calories now it may not be 100% exact but neither will your calorie counting so if you count that you're eating 1800 calories in a day you may be wrong by 100 calories up or down both ways yeah so you will still have the deficit because you will be in a ballpark figure also i would strongly advise you to not be like again in a hurry to lose weight because a lot of people will say oh okay i need uh, 2000 calories a day to maintain my weight so now i'm going to eat 1000 calories a day and cut a 1000 no 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 remember slow and steady is the right way to lose weight so you'd want to have a 200 or a 300 calorie deficit and then if after a week or two weeks you're not losing weight or you're not losing body fat then you can increase the deficit a little bit also a great way to actually increase the deficit without reducing the amount of calories you are eating is by exercising it may not be a whole lot of calories like you may go for a walk and you'll burn 200 calories it's not a lot but it's still something and it also then allows you to not go in a drastic calorie deficit so that's something i think you should keep in mind now one of the other things that i really want to focus on and this is my personal sort of uh way of eating now is focus on protein whatever diet you are doing focus on getting protein because protein is what helps you to maintain the muscle that you already have so that when you are losing weight you are losing more body fat and not much muscle yeah and the other thing i would strongly urge you to do is no matter what your health and fitness situation is start lifting some weights and doing resistance training you don't have you're not going to look like a bodybuilder if you lift lift weights trust me look at me i've been lifting now for 2 years do i look like a bodybuilder absolutely not and that's because the diet is everything if i want to look like a bodybuilder apart from taking steroids if i want to look like most bodybuilders i would need to really 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 cut down on my eating and like be on a super strict regimen like that is an is a is a sport and it's 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 a thing that requires intense discipline and you have to really want to be a bodybuilder to actually get anywhere close to achieving those results trust me on this if you go to the gym and lift weights you're not even going to be close to looking like a bodybuilder for a lot of people they think oh if i go to the gym i'll start looking bulky and all that you won't just go to the gym lift some weights because that is what will help you build muscle and eating enough protein will help make sure that you maintain that muscle one of the things that i have noticed is as people get older they start to lose muscle they become weak and frail and the older you get the more you want to focus on eating protein and going to the gym and lifting weights you can lift light weights you can use resistance bands you can do body weight exercises the world is your oyster pick something that you enjoy and do it but definitely do it so that you don't lose muscle that's very important 
one more thing I want to talk about is motivation because somebody said how do I stay motivated and how do I like be motivated when it comes to losing weight and here's my answer motivation is short-lived you know motivation lasts for a couple of days maybe a week you need to make small sustainable lifestyle changes say it with me again people small sustainable lifestyle changes that you can actually adhere to do you need motivation to wake up in the morning and brush your teeth you probably don't so you want to incorporate habits into your lifestyle that you can actually adhere to that become part of your routine and that are not a chore for you so maybe you don't need to start walking for 60 minutes every day maybe you just wake up in the morning and you walk up and down your house for 10 minutes and that's a start that's where you start till that 10 minutes becomes normal like you you don't even think about it you wake up you walk 10 minutes maybe you add five push-ups to that then you add 10 sit-ups and slowly slowly you build this up maybe you go to the gym twice a week to start with go on a Monday or maybe go on Wednesday and Friday but start make it small and then slowly build up from there because motivation will run out but if you've built these habits into your lifestyle it will be much easier to actually do them now the other thing talking about calories and all these other things is all well and good Here's my way of looking at food now. I have stopped labeling food as good and bad. You know, oh, this cookie is bad. Don't touch the cookie. It is evil. It is going to kill you. No, one cookie is not going to kill you. You know, you eat a piece of cake. Are you going to die? Absolutely not. Is it going to destroy your progress? Is it going to send you to hospital? Unless it's uh, not following the safety protocol of, uh, you know, food hygiene. It's not. The thing is, they say, you know, the po the the dose makes the poison yeah so if you're going to consume things in moderation it's not a problem but what's important is to look at food in maybe a different way maybe stop labeling things as this is bad evil remember most of the time when you tell kids or people not to do something they do it you know so that's just human psychology you know <laughs> whichever way you want to look at it so my suggestion is rather than say this food is bad and I can't eat it or this food is good and I should only eat it look at the food from the perspective of what is it bringing to the table is this food nutritious you know and try and pick nutritious food for the most part like I said 80% consistency so if 80% of the time you are eating delicious healthy nutritious food I think you're okay and that 20% when you're eating something that's a little more indulgent that's also fine the truth is we make a very big deal about a lot of things that don't need to be a big deal you know for example we say oh a burger is unhealthy well if you look at it honestly neither the bun is unhealthy nor is the meat nor is the cheese really nor are the vegetables in it nor the sauces no component on its own is unhealthy the problem really is not the fact that the burger is unhealthy it's just that it's a very high calorie food with a limited nutrition profile so you will get some protein from the meat you will get high fat from the the fat in the meat as well as the bread and you'll get a little bit of nutrition from the vegetables maybe if you're if you still keep them in the burger so overall maybe that's not the most nutritious meal maybe it's not something you eat every day and largely most of these things if they are whole foods if they are made by people you know um, they're okay they're made with with normal ingredients it's just that they're high calorie and they perhaps don't bring in the right nutrition that you need on a daily basis so you don't eat them every day but when you do eat them you're not feeling guilty because you've eaten a bad food or something you're just eating something because yeah it's it's all right you know i don't know i think a lot of people get offended and triggered by these things and look at the end of the day it is your health you have to make the right choice for, so for you if you're like hey man i want to stay away from sugar okay stay away from sugar but you don't need to tell me what i need to do with my life because i know if i eat a little bit of sugar i'm actually okay and the thing is take care of your health be consistent 80 percent of the time and try and pick nutritious foods and when it comes to weight loss 
eat in a calorie deficit and you will lose weight one way or another and if you're not losing weight you're probably not in enough of a calorie deficit or you're not counting the calories correctly yeah but you need to be in a calorie deficit to lose weight that's all it really takes so at the end of this episode now what i would like you to actually take away is weight loss is not a race slow and steady weight loss is the best way to do it try and think of your overall health rather than just the number on the scale focus on muscle building eating sufficient protein and maintaining your muscle as you lose body fat pick nutritious food eat a well balanced diet eat the colors of the rainbow so you get all the micronutrients and all the vitamins and all the good stuff and this is a long slow process that's going to end only when you're dead and you will have to look at your health and fitness till that very day so take these bits of information see what works for you and if you have any medical condition don't listen to influencers on the internet don't even listen to doctors on the internet go to an actual doctor and get a consultancy because uh, sorry get a consult with an actual doctor because they will take responsibility for you unlike influencers and online doctors who have disclaimers below saying this is not medical advice and if anything happens to you it's not their problem so on that note i'm going to say goodbye let me know in the comments what other topics you'd like me to cover in these podcasts if you have any questions about today's episode please let me know i'll be happy to answer them as well and i will see you on the next episode of headbangers kitchen because this has been enough jibber jabber until then cheers and keep cooking